How did a lost global civilization once cut solid stone with such ease and precision? Unimaginably large megalithic structures, laser-like cut stones, utilized within the baffling, polygonal masonry, not to mention the mystery surrounding the construction of the Great Pyramids. Many mysterious drilled stone cores can be found throughout Giza. These enigmatic tool marks can also be found at the incredibly ancient dolmen of Valkonsky in Russia, exposing the capabilities and clear technological prowess that this lost civilization, who we feel were possibly experiencing an ice age, had left in order to survive its fallout. Yet I digress. Discovered within Austria, we were initially presented with just these three images, two of the exterior, which, if one looks closely, not only displays the porthole of a hidden chamber hidden upon the side of a solid rock face, but that the surrounding rocks had also been cut and finished to an incredibly high standard somewhere in the very distant past. This indicated to us that this chamber that is not only reminiscent of the hypogeum in Malta with the addition of the stone within the circular chamber, which we cannot avoid feeling, could have some form of connection to resonance creation, with erosion indicative of a site with an age similar to Cappadocia's ruins, but later revealed to have been, as we expected, but one chamber, in a maze akin to that of the underground city of Derinkuyu hidden within an Austrian book of antiquities, we discover a series of fortunately mapped solid stone-cut chambers which litter this enormous chunk of exposed bedrock. Clearly an astonishing prehistoric site, one cut by an incredibly capably, and we feel, clearly technologically advanced civilization. For why would a civilization with simple, primitive tools, such as those made of blunt or brittle stones, or soft, malleable metals, such as that of copper, go to such extremes in the creation of a maze of hidden chambers, each not only finished to an incredibly precise degree, but to have worked stones into unnatural shapes outside of these chambers, many serving no essential function as far as we can identify? Who created this prehistoric site found within the landscape of Austria? How old are the chambers? What technology or tools were utilized in the creation of such a magnificent ancient ruin? Or indeed, that of the Volkonsky Dolmen, along with the many similarly drilled cores and their stone blocks found throughout Giza? Do all these pieces of evidence indicate the past existence of a lost civilization, one who possessed advanced stone-cutting technology? We find such possibilities highly compelling. Archaeologists have discovered yet another ancient anomaly, which has linked a now lost but once clearly advanced global civilization. Pertaining to a wall relief in Peru, belonging to the oldest civilization in the Americas. The wall, although dated to approximately 3,800 years ago, depicts what many now believe is an illustrated narrative of the difficulties they experienced prior to a cataclysm caused by an ancient climate change. One meter high and 2.8 meters long, the wall relief was discovered in the seaside archaeological site of Vichama, 110 kilometers north of Peru's capital, Lima. The Vichama site is part of the recently discovered, yet now lost, Caral civilization, also known as Norte Chico. Dated at over 5,000 years ago, this dating alone makes it the oldest civilization known to have dwelled within the Americas, now claimed as purely coincidental. This civilization flourished around the same time as that of the thriving civilization of Mesopotamia, ancient Egypt, and also Chinese civilizations. The Corral civilization was located in the Supi Valley, along the north-central coast of Peru. Made of adobe, a clay-like material, the wall seemingly documents climate change, one which could not have been contributed to by human activities. Archaeologist Ruth Shandy, who oversaw the excavations at the site, 
hypothesized that the serpents within represented a water deity that irrigated the earth and made seeds grow. She believes the relief was likely done towards the end of a drought and famine, that the Corral civilization, among others we have covered in the past, once experienced with other reliefs displaying emaciated humans. Many self-funded archaeologists now believe, like we have postulated, that the discovery reinforces the notion that these early humans were depicting the difficulties they faced due to climate change and a depletion in available water for irrigation, which had a large impact on their agricultural production. The excavation has, to date, unearthed the ruins of 22 buildings in a 25 square hectare space. It would appear that, just like that of the site of Tikal and the now lost plaque which once depicted the dramatic scene of a cataclysm, a great flood, along with erupting volcanoes, with a boat seemingly attempting to escape this event, surrounded by many of the population drowning, a cooperating artifact fortunately photographed before its mysterious disappearance. Was there indeed a great flood? One which seemingly followed a great famine? It would seem the evidence for such an event is mounting, thanks to not only the evidential sediments which once drenched many of the still unexplained ancient sites of the world, but also by its depiction by those who lived through it. It is, indeed, a highly compelling mystery. The awe-inspiring ancient city of Hegra, also known as Madain Saleh, close sister of the equally astonishing and cinematically famous ancient site of Petra, is now finally open to the public, able to go and investigate for themselves. We have covered this site, and indeed the gigantic scale of the rock-cut temples, the claimed tombs, and tall doorways to enter these sites. Furthermore, we have covered uncanny similarities found upon rare, unfinished areas of these once astonishingly precisely cut solid rock ruins. In addition to the enormous scale of the stone-cut buildings, and the absence of doorsteps, which would have enabled the now average-sized human claimed as having created them, no chance of entering them with ease. This giving credence to the many theories pertaining to these gigantic structures, along with their gigantic scales and their enormous megalithic counterparts found at other sites, linked to by cutting marks previously mentioned, were instead constructed by an ancient, now lost race far larger than any of today, one capable of these incredible ancient feats. Could these structures have instead of, as so many, as indeed we have postulated, not actually built by ancient man, but were actually made by ancient giants? Not only with the muscular ability to have once lifted such enormous stones into position, such as that of the enormous megalithic stones incorporated into the Great Pyramids of Giza, found within the temples of Baalbek, Gornyashoria, but also almost globally? Could this explain how they were once able to liberate these giant stones from the quarries and bedrocks selected almost many miles from where they were eventually placed with seeming ease? How they were somehow transported, enormous stones high atop mountains, assembling them into the remarkably precise laid polygonal masonry that now drenches the tops of Peruvian peaks, how they once raised the ancient obelisk of Aswan. But I digress. Many have now conceded that the methodology of the Great Pyramids of Giza construction continues to be an enigma in regards to a modern explanation as to how the modern man accomplished such feats. Could this mystery be linked to the cover-up in which many have claimed, and we ourselves encountered, in regard to the remains of this possibly lost civilization, smothered by the Smithsonian, one that we would now perceive as ancient giants? It is a hypothesis which would indeed be a fitting explanation for these mysteries and a cover-up, the stifling of a reason for their continued inexplicability to modern explanation. It is a theory which we find incredibly intriguing. Froelich Gladstone Rainey was an American anthropologist. A master of narrative prose, he was the type of ancient specialist 
anyone in the field would have relished working with. Regarding the Arctic, he put it to the National History Museum as follows, quote, We have now found an Arctic metropolis, many times larger than anything previously thought possible in this part of the world, and once inhabited by a people whose material culture differed markedly from that of the Eskimos as we know them. He continues, One morning in the June of 1940, when Magnus Markey and I had returned to begin the second season of digging at Iputak, we soon became aware of the astonishing extent of these ruins. We could see long avenues of yellow squares, marking the ancient buildings, spanning east and west for well over a mile. Over the next several days, we hurriedly attempted to chart these ruins before they all became hidden once more. We eventually realized that more than 600 buildings would have once stood on this ancient site, a site well over a mile in length." End quote. Dated at many thousands of years old, you have to wonder, why is not more publicity shared regarding these mysterious people? One of the most striking facts regarding their artifacts was the high standard of craftsmanship. Sophisticated objects have been unearthed which demonstrate a far more complex civilization than the proto-Eskimo culture academia would have you believe inhabited the area. The architectural abilities of this mysterious group also far exceeds the capabilities of other ancient cultures even as far as Mexico. The largest ancient settlement ever found to have existed in Alaska, it was even bigger than any Arctic coastal village in Alaska or Canada today. The town of Iputak would have once been home to more than 8,000 people. Just who were the Iputak people? How did they survive so successfully within an Arctic climate many thousands of years ago? Are we looking at a culture far older than we are told? Regardless, one reason to conceal such a fact would be the Bering Strait hypothesis, a hypothesis conveniently crucial to evolution theory, and one which numerous people have lost their careers over. Dr. Scott Elias at the Colorado Institute of Arctic and Alpine Research, as far as orthodox scholarship is concerned, the validity of the Bering Land Bridge route is not up for debate. Regardless of such cult rhetoric, the Iputak people are certainly an interesting and controversial bunch, and worthy of future study. We will keep you posted.